Welcome back, guys. It's been a little while. Had some things come up, some vacation stuff, whatever, but we're back at it. Back on the K5 again, and... Hey, back in action, baby. Yeah. We're here. We finally decided to show up. We played hooky the last few episodes, but... They don't pay me well at this place, so... <laughs> yeah, it took a little convincing to drag him up here, yeah, but yeah. he's back. Yes, sir. So, today, we're going to work on uh, installing the Dakota Digital cluster into the K5. The reason we're doing the Dakota Digital is because of the LS swap, there's so many things that are different. The temperature sending units, the speedometer, factory it didn't have a tack, a lot of issues like that that can be converted using the stock cluster, but it's just a lot of work and then you have a lot of conversion things that are potential issues and then you still have original gauges that are old and discolored and the faces of them are scratched. So. And they do the, uh, oh yeah, you know what I'm talking about. You yeah. know, the people know. The, the people, people know. know. <laughs> the people know. The old stepper motors get just, they're just yeah. junk. Um, so by the time I roughly did the math, and this is only a couple hundred dollars more by the time you buy a tack and the module and the conversion for the speedometer and all the things you need to make the LS talk to this properly. So, and this looks better. Way uh, better. Way better. This particular unit is Dakota Digital, like I said, but this is a square body syndicate series. Um, if you haven't seen these dudes, they do some really cool stuff. Uh, specialize in square body stuff, obviously. Came out with a cluster, they came out with a column and some little neat things for these things. So this is theirs. This is the closest to an OEM style that Dakota Digital makes, meaning that the, the colors inside of the tack the yellow and red is pretty close, orange indicators, the fonts and whatnot, the locations of the gauges are as close to original as they can probably legally get it. Yeah. And it just looks cool. It's, it gives a real like OE feel and it's neat. So this is kind of everything it comes with. Obviously you have the main unit here. You have what I call, I don't know, the brain box. I don't know what the actual name for this guy is, but this is where all your inputs will come in and your output will come out. Comes with Cat5 cable for this to talk to the main unit properly. Comes with mounting brackets. These are turn signal indicator harnesses. This is your control switch. So this is how you will toggle through different functions within the cluster and we'll show you that in a little while and some miscellaneous cables for different sensors and whatnot. So, and obviously your literature, um, if you're like us, you'll just wing it and, until you can't figure it out and then you'll refer to that. Or if you're smart, you'll go ahead and read it to begin with. But it, I can't read, so. <laughs> I can't read real good. Yeah. So it's great, great instructions. It tells you all the setup stuff, uh, gives you just, I mean, diagrams, everything you would need shows you how all the stuff goes together. One thing that you won't see here is it comes with a, sen a sensor package and you don't see it because we've already installed it. When I dressed the motor out to put it in, I went ahead and robbed them. We'll go over that and I'll show you exactly where they go and how to put them in. But I went ahead and did that while the motor was out because it was just easier. So, ready to get to work? I'm excited to get into it. This is that fancy stuff. Well, it's been, some, it's been a Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so first thing we'll start with is the disassembly of the stock stuff. All right, so it's partially disassembled to start with, obviously, because we've been working on the truck for a while. You don't have to take the dash pad out. This one's out because we're gonna, it's gonna get replaced. It makes life a lot easier with the dash pad curves around here. It's got a lip and it makes it a little tricky to get out. So take the little extra time, especially if your dash is in good condition and just go ahead and take the pad out just so the cluster doesn't get caught on the edge here and you end up cracking it, you know, trying to save five minutes of time. So just go ahead and do that. Um, obviously there's a gauge bezel that's supposed to go here. You pull it. Um, some people drop the column, some people don't. Uh, it just depends. I don't really mess with it, but um, I might since it's freshly painted. We'll see how it goes. But get all that out of the way. Then you'll start with the bolts around the perimeter. They're uh, one, two, three, and it's supposed to be a fourth one that's broken off. So take those, get those out, and uh, remove this assembly.
All right, once you get the cluster out, there's a couple things that you can note. If you look right here, it's a speedo cable. Okay, we're not gonna use that. Obviously that's all electronic now. This is the main harness plug for the cluster, for the stock cluster. We are gonna to have to use part of this. Pull up online. This is 6772 form, and they have all the information you need on the colors. They have it by numbers, and they have a nice little diagram here. Probably can't see it, but when it talks about the diagram, it's not looking at it this way. It's looking at it like it's plugged in. And you can see it's all dark green, black, pink, it, and it explains it all on the page here. So we'll use some of these inputs on the new cluster. For instance, left and right turn signal, dimmer, um, you know, like the, the bolts and like the little stuff will all come off of the truck itself. So um, fuel level sender, that'll be from the box. But yeah, it'll all walk you through it in the instructions. So you will use some of these. So what I do is I'll come in, you know, cut just the ones I need and, and pigtail off of those and then leave the rest of them here. And then usually wrap this up with electrical tape so that it doesn't short or ground inside of here. I don't never cut these all the way off because I just think it, I don't know, it looks kind of hacked to do that uh, with a bunch of wires. So I just kind of cover this up with electrical tape so it doesn't hit anything and just use the wires I need. Like I said, we're not using this. The original uh, illumination for the cluster we don't use, so don't worry about any of that. Um, so you can remove this, clean up back in here, you know, tidy this up a little bit, and then pop the new cluster. So the, uh, the, the instructions for the mounting tabs are pretty easy. You're going to put the, uh, the mounting tab facing the center of the gauges. They do specifically say, you'll see the slots right there in the gauge cluster. You're going to leave those loose until it's all the way installed in the truck. So you're going to use uh, four 3 8 screws. They're supplied. They're all right there uh, for those two mounting tabs. And this one over here is going to get the longer 3 quarter screws. Um, but yeah, I'll show you after that. So part of the kit is the selector switch. This allows you to toggle through some of the functions within the gauge cluster itself. Uh, to helps you set up the parameters for the different sending units. Goes through the 0 to 60 and whatnot. Just helps you control the functions within it. So got to mount it somewhere. Want to put it somewhere discreet. Obviously, you don't want it in the middle of your dash. So what I opted to do is hide it in the ashtray. This is 2022. You shouldn't be smoking anyway, so let's repurpose this. First thing I did, clean it up a little bit, put a little spray paint on it because it needed to look fresh. Comes with this little mounting bracket. What I did is I just bobbed the ear off one side for clearance, put an M6 1.0 nut cert in it, and then that will fit right in here, a little hole in the side where my little stainless button head Allen is. That way the whole truck will rust around that one bolt. Yep. It'll be the last bolt standing. Exactly. I mean, it is a square body, so. <laughs> So that gets installed like so. Also drilled another hole in the back for the wire to pass through. So we'll go through here first. And then you struggle with it for a minute. Say more than three times and you're playing with it. <laughs> That's what I do best. Pull that through, and there's a little, just a little tain, I guess you would say, on the side that locks into there. Just put that in the correct side, and then you're not supposed to tighten it up first, which I did. <laughs> Here we are. So give that a little room to pop in. Oop, that'll pop like that. Snug that back up. And there you go. So now all you have to do is open the ashtray. Just toggle through your functions. All right, so as far as sensors on the motor itself, there's only gonna be two. This one's gonna be water temperature. Okay, so this comes in the sensor pack. Like I said, we already installed it a little while back, but so this is the sensor itself, and this is the adapter, and there's a little aluminum crush sleeve. And so all you do is you go through the pack, you figure out which one threads in properly, put your little aluminum crush sleeve in there, and be ever so gently snugging this up. It the, the wall thickness is very, very minimal on this and you can easily wring it off in the head and then you've got a little job for yourself. So be very careful putting this one in. Like I said, this is a water temperature sensor. Some people put it in different places. 
this is where I put it in. It's going to read a little warmer being in the back of the head, but I'd rather air on the little hotter side. I put it here on two or three applications and never had a problem. So it's got a little plug in it from the factory. Pull the plug out, put your fitting in, you're good to go. We'll walk around to the other side. So you can see right here, this is behind the intake manifold, or I say under the intake manifold behind. So this is the transmission, obviously. This is where your factory oil pressure sending unit goes. We're not going to use that. We're just going to uh, put this Dakota digital piece in. Same thing, it's got an adapter. Figure out which one screws in. A little bit of thread tape. Screw the adapter in, screw the sensor in. Now, when you pull the factory sensor out, it takes a special socket. Uh, if you have the intake off, you can just use some channel locks. So like I said, we're not going to reuse it. So who cares if you booger it up a little bit, pull the factory sensor out, put that sensor in, you're good to go. All right. Now that we have the sensors installed in the motor, time to plug in the harnesses that come with them. So three wire is going to be the oil pressure and it goes obviously down where we installed the oil pressure and put it in there's the retaining clip and then there's a little little tain you just match those two up pop them in so there's the oil i got me my water temp over here two wire easy i love me some gm connectors man them things are just it's one thing they did right so now that we have plugged in they got to go inside the cabin right so find i like to find a hole that we're not going to use there was one right here that was some diesel harness stuff that obviously we're not going to use that anymore so what i did is i got a universal style body plug that just happens to be the perfect size drilled a hole little rubber grommet right and that guy will pop right into here boom like so and then you just take the ends of your harnesses and you feed them through so there's one Obviously, mine will be the shortest distance, and we'll pretty much make a straight line. Andrews has to come around, so we'll we'll do a little zip tie work and tidy those up when the time comes. Do you want to? I'm going to ask you a question on the phone here. Do you want to go under the dipstick, or you want to go over it? Uh, let's go under it. I'm through the plug wire too over here, so okay. you sit under it. Yeah. Hot on stuff here. Wash the paint. Wash the paint. Wash the paint. Paint. It's hard to get. A, it's hard to get a good painter to do anything now these days. Yeah, I don't know any person. <laughs> oh. Sheesh. Feed the second one in. So now we didn't create any new holes. We reused one that we obviously weren't going to reuse anyway. And I had to make this thing sensor long enough to plug it into the back bumper. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Where did they think we're mounting the motor on this thing? Just keep your options open. I guess. One inch at a time, just like everybody else. Yeah. Yeah, story of my teen years. <laughs> All right, so now we got those through. You know, once we go back and tidy a bunch of wiring up, these will get some zip ties and we'll probably get some nice little split braid loom, but. You get the idea. So now we're inside ready to hook up. A ton of heat coming up from the headers because we're right here at the collector. So what I like to use, a little DEI, little uh, heat sleeve deal here, works out real nice. So you just cut it to length. It comes with some heat shrink basic stuff. And I just put it right here and obviously that gets tied back around, but this kind of helps this plug. And the reason I do this is because I had this exact area of a plug melt on another build I did. So I like to protect it. So there we go. All right, so got everything kind of cleaned up here and somewhat simplified. I've taken the original plug like we talked about, covered it up with some electro tape, put it off to the side. I took the wires we needed. I've already tucked them away here, but you can see they, they've been uh, soldered and heat shrink. 
and they run down under there. Okay, so two of them, it's all in that diagram on the forms. Two of them here, light blue and dark blue, is going to be your uh, signal indicators. So those go to these separate little white wires that'll plug in. I'll show you here in a second. They have a shared dedicated ground. Other dedicated ground here is to the control box for the Dakota Digital. So it's pretty simple. It's just these three plugs. So now you take your cluster. Be extra mindful of those plastic tabs. Yeah, the plastic <laughs> tabs on these, not the strongest. <laughs> so the main cap one plugs in and make sure you get your left and right correct. These are correct according to answers, so if they're wrong, we get to give them a hard time about it. No, left will be right, right will be left. Yeah. I Never think... let them know your next move. That's what they tell me. Never. <laughs> so you just get those three plugged in, ease it back into place. And just keep an eye on your wiring. Make sure you don't want to pinch anything as you put it in there. Boom, there it goes. So just put your screws in, same ones you took out, and that'll be installed. And if you look down here, here is the control box. Everything's upside down because that's just the way it ended up. But So there's the Cat5 cable that goes back up to the cluster. And all the wires have already been ran, with the exception of a few. Uh, I made a dedicated uh, harness, if you will, to two wires. They want you to go directly to the center unit with a ground. So I made a ground and a positive back to the tank. These, uh, the oil and the water, are going to be the harnesses we put in earlier. This is for the switch stuff. And all this is in the instructions. It's real simple. You just put it in. The only things we don't have is we don't have the power yet because I haven't placed the battery in the um, distribution block and whatnot. So we're missing that. We're missing the speedometer stuff, the tack stuff. All that's gonna come from the engine harness, which isn't installed yet. But this is just to give you a good idea and just kind of show you uh, the basics of putting it in and, and how I put this in. So, and also I don't have it with me, but what I like to do is on the backside here, nice and flat, I'm gonna put two strips of Velcro and I know this looks like a mess, but with some wire ties, you can tie this all this extra wire up and put it just right under here. So it'll go on this nice little flat area under the dash. You put your Velcro there. That way it's easy to take on and off if you need to adjust something or do whatever. It's right there, super simple. It doesn't impede your, with your radio, any of your other factory harness. It's a nice, easy area to put it. And with Velcro, you don't have to have any exposed fasteners. So once that's Velcroed final, all this, you know, will get wire tied up out of the way and cleaned up. I know it looks like a mess, but that's just part of it. Um, yeah, so real simple. You see, we took the harness here and just kind of ran it along the creases and to the back for the fuel sending unit. And there you go. Simple enough. This one won't be finished today, but luckily we have another one here that I finished and I'll show you how to work it. Oh, yeah. Final product there. Love that. Love that. Real simple. Hide it away and we'll eventually replace this with a nice little USB charger. And right there we're going to put a big old nitrous button. I'm going to convince him. A little, little 250 shot maybe. Yes, when he buys it we're going to put in his <laughs> nitrous switch. It's going to be a small kit. <laughs> Alright, so obviously the K5 is not done yet. Still got some wiring things to tidy up with the engine harness and some dedicated powers and stuff to do. In the meantime, luckily I have another square body, an 85 Chevrolet is my grandfather, grandfather's truck. It's got the same cluster in it, same square body syndicate unit. So let me just walk you through some of the highlights of it. So you can see just like the other one, it's got the OEM look. The This is a Gen 1, so the RPMs are a little different and the speedometer is a little different. The placement of some of the accessory gauges, a little different, but Basically the same. Two LCD uh, readouts, just like the other one is. Flip it on. See, it goes through. And just like the other truck, you know, we flip open the ashtray. We got our toggle switch. Same thing here. And this lets you toggle through the different screens. Screen one, screen, screen two. So you can see it just has different trips. All the different water temp, oil pressure, voltage, blah, blah, blah. 
And then on the other screen, that would be screen two. Timers, it's got like a zero to 60, a high speed thing, quarter mile thing, you know, who knows if that's right, but it's kind of neat. New truck don't even have that. Yeah, new trucks don't even have that mess. RPM, you know, this is a uh, 406 small block, so I don't even think 8,000 is enough for this this hot unit. No, nah, that thing will spend 9,500. It'll, it'll do 9,500 on the safe chip. <laughs> you know, so it's just a real cool looking, just basic gauge cluster. You know, it's, they're expensive, but it just adds a flavor to it. You know, it's, and they're more accurate. You can calibrate them to your sending unit. So if you change tanks, if you, let's say, go to EFI, you don't have to get a different sending unit or a different uh, gauge. You just change the calibration. It's so easy. You can go back and change anything at any time. You change wheels and tires, you can recalibrate the speedometer, all with the click of those two buttons in the ashtray. I'm going to do that a lot, too. Big wheel and tire changer. Love yeah. a new look. Nothing like changing wheels and tires to make a new look. Not To not have to recalibrate anything other than go through your little menu. That's sick. Yeah, so, I mean, it's it's the move. It makes sense to me. And plus, the K5 in, is, has ended up being a higher-end build than I intended for it to be. So, it needed, needed better stuff. So That doesn't happen that often around here, does it? No, no. We don't always mine as well things to death. <laughs> but, you know, here it is. So, this gives you a basic rundown. There's some really great videos online on how to calibrate stuff. I'm not going to recalibrate this truck because it works. So when I get power to the K5, I'll probably do another video on setting that up, just a little quickie. But until then, you know, this, this is a basics. Show you a couple of little tips and tricks that I've learned from doing a few of these. And so, yeah, I mean, it's a pretty good Sunday, wasn't it, Andrew? Yeah, pretty productive. What for us, I, at least. For us. For the know? first week back, I'm pretty happy with it. The first week back, yeah. huge barbecue lunch. Oh, yeah. Dying for a nap right now. Dying. But I think, uh, yeah, I think it's pretty productive. So in the future videos, we're going to have one coming up on the fuel system. We're going to have one coming up on vintage air. One coming up on something. What us? I, all I have on my mind is vintage air because... Some air conditioning will be nice in this Georgia summer right now. That's oh what I'm my say. God, yes. I am losing weight, though, by the second. <laughs> Water weight counts. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, thanks for sticking around. Like, subscribe. You know the deal. We appreciate you sticking around this long if you have. Until next time, see you.